see your stoke. Well, now that we have successfully screwed up the high project, it's time for a massive repair, I guess. Many people, when they run aground with their project, they just abandon it and throw it out to the trash. But in Japanese calligraphy, there is a saying that even if you screw up the first uh, stroke of a character, consisting of even 20 strokes, uh, you're still obliged to finish up the whole character, or even, even the whole text for that matter, to the last stroke, and then you can have another try. So you've got to live with what you've done. We have sawn the chest in half at the wrong place, and now we are stranded with uh, three portions of unequal size and not the right size. So we will have to do some adjustments to the sizes so that we can put it back together at the correct uh, measurements. Let's do this. Okay, so this is the secondary plan to put back one piece of the sawn off middle section. However, the saw job is not perfect. As you can uh, see, I tried to mark it as jagged as I could. It's almost as bad as the actual saw job. So what we will do is the following. We will trim this using the router like this. So running the router over the edges would hopefully leave us with straight joints that would allow us to fit the chest back together perfectly or at least nicely enough so that the glue would hold. And I measured uh, the width of this uh, strip to put back and it came to 60 millimeters. So this is a butt joint, but unfortunately it does not work across the end grain. So the grain is running horizontally or I mean I should say lengthwise in the board. You could imagine these as strips of straw. Even if you glued it up, it would not give a strong joint. That's why we need a tongue and groove. But of course, if we measure 60 cm for the middle part, then we would have to account for the groove here and the tongue here, each of which being 20 mm. So if I want a 60 mm addition into the side of the chest like this, I would have to leave the middle portion at least 60 plus 20 plus 20 that's uh, uh, 100 millimeters so a 10 centimeter strip would allow us to add 60 millimeters of solid wood to the chest itself and of course the tongs and grooves we will route out on the router
So I have glued up the sides and fortunately I had this mallet somewhere. I made last year. Hopefully we'll have a chance to use it now. just came up with this idea to use uh, some kind of a lever to generate more torque on this up clamp because with my bare hands I was not strong enough to grip hard and pull the parts together so there is still this seam visible so I took a vice grip and snapped it right here so that I can generate much more torque than I should have with just my hands okay now that the glue has been setting for a few days let's see what we've done okay so this is one end of the chest you can see how the joinery was done it's not really nice but at least it's functional so this is a tongue and groove and it runs along uh, the chest all the way to the bottom these are fairly okay edges not not that bad from me it's not that bad believe me okay so as you can see we are pretty close to the end result here this is how it should look in the end this would be our last chance to check if the size is fine so at the moment we have a two centimeter tong here, I mean groove here. We will make a two centimeter tong on the opposite side and put these together. So we will lose two centimeters from the overall width, which should just be fine. This is where the chest will end. So I will have one centimeter here and one centimeter on the other side for leeway to manipulate the frames. Okay, let's swap the router glue. Unplug first. So until now we were using this uh, straight lid. And now my favorite part comes when I install the bottom clearance lid. So basically this is how you use a, a handheld router fence. This is what your workpiece rides against, this fence, and you set the depth of your cut, I mean the width of your cut, with moving the fence along. Okay, let's plug this bad boy back in. Take cover. Oh, before I forget, this bit is about 4 centimeters in diameter, so I will have to adjust the rotation speed here from 6 to 4 because the wider the bit you are using, the slower they need to rotate. So if I turn it on, you will immediately notice uh, the frequency difference. You just have to see this, this is just so freaking cool.
Can you see how just smooth it got? I'm getting the feeling that I should have done this like this all along. It might have been much, much easier. Now it's time to glue it all up. Okay, all we need to do is just clamp it down like this and let's put something heavy on top again. This is my favorite way of using a vise to hold down stuff. Usually it's not the way you use a vice. <laughs> Let's apply some other vice accessories such as the top of a vice and the crank of the vice. Okay. That's what I call heavy metal. Okay, this is it. And it's just the right size for a beekeeping frame to go inside. Like this. So guys, as you have seen, we've managed to get back on track by putting the box back together and we have the correct dimensions, so that's a plus. In the next coming episodes, we will furnish the hive, we will of course add the lid on top, we will have to add entrances for the bees to enter and exit the hive, we will paint it over to a nice beekeeping color. If you have an idea on the color, then please don't hesitate to let me know what color you wish to paint me. No. What color you wish me to paint the box. <laughs> it's an entirely different thing, right? If you are curious enough and would like to see the hive in action, then please consider subscribing and stick around for the next episodes. If you want to make me feel good, then hit the like button. Believe it or not, it will also make you feel good, so why not give it a try? Thanks for being with me, see you in the next episode.